to sit on the other side of this speaker. Well, now you're making me you're making me explain this in front of the audience. You stay. You want me to stand? No, no. I thought you were going to be over there with the guitar, but oh, you could no, be the, right the there. Guitar comes after. Oh, okay. I got a speech, and then the guitar. Okay, so you want to do the speech there? No, I want to stand. I'll be here. Okay. Let's make you well. Happy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this is the 369th meeting of the New York Comics and Picture Story Symposium. This is a weekly reading series, performance series, uh, lecture series with people who make comics, people who think about comics, people who do something with comics in some kind of way. It was founded over a decade ago by Ben Catcher. My name is Austin English. I've been helping Ben out uh, with this calendar year. And um, uh, this calendar is also co curated with Bill Cardlopoulos and Lily Correa. We are really, really lucky to have as tonight's guest, uh, Juliet Calais, who is not only releasing, one of my favorite cartoonists to emerge in the last couple of years has made some brilliant comics. She has a new comic out tonight. Um, and tonight is the release party for this, blah, 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 number four, which is on sale uh, here at this bookstore. So we can thank, we can thank Unnameable Books for hosting this live edition of the New York Comics Symposium. We can thank Eli for setting this uh, event up. Um, and so Julia Clay has done uh, blah, 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 issues one through three, tonight issue four, and she will be doing a presentation about this new work, I believe, and about her work in general. She will have multiple guests, which are right awesome. over here. Yeah. She'll introduce them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So without further ado, here's Juliet. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is a release party, so let's party like there's no tomorrow. I thought about a lot of ways to start this talk, and here's one of them. Hello, comic symposium, osium, 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 osium. Penis, enus, 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 enus. <laughs> all right, um, all right. Uh, I wrote this talk the same way I've written all of my books, alone in my bedroom. I put off writing it for a really long time because of various complexes surrounding my age and lack of comprehensive knowledge in any given subject. But I'm going to try to approach this talk the same way I started making books. The idea is, pretend you could make a book. What kind of book would you make? During this extended imaginary play where you rejoice in the hypothetical decision-making that comes with the creation of an anything, you are all the while actually making a real book that will enter the world and connect you to all sorts of strange people and ideas. So was the case for me because books have completely upended my life. There are things in us all that we find difficult to express. Maybe they don't fit into words so well, or maybe the people around us aren't ready to hear them. My parents, hi mom, I know you're watching, <laughs> don't like to read my comics so much because I often depict myself in a lot of pain or I write about having sex. My parents and parents in general have a hard time accepting that we experience pain and sex to a lesser degree. So where do we put it all? Art is a beautiful space where anything can happen. It has lived out hypothetical realities that serve as a mirror world where anything is possible. It is a space to be dirty and, and weird and obnoxious and desperate and pining, all with a certain dignity. I used to write a lot about my own lived experiences, not because I think I'm particularly interesting, but because it was the only subject I felt I had real authority over. I wrote about things that people usually don't tell people and it didn't bother me to tell people, and I loved that it didn't bother me. I started writing books because I wanted friends. I had just come to New York and was having a hard time making genuine connections at art school. It felt like people only wanted to be your friend if they were impressed with your work, and since I was a transfer student and no one knew my work yet, they were wary to associate with someone who might diminish their reputation. That's how wow. I felt at the time. Um, I was angsty, self-righteous, and lonely, and that led to my first scene. Blah, 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 one. I was proud of it because it had this story, Bad Sex, which I drew immediately after a traumatizing sexual sexual experience I had. That's gonna come right now if you wanna share the screen. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. Oh yeah, this was- supposed One to moment here. A rousing speech from our generous host. <laughs> Let me know. Um. Yeah, just give me one second. Take all the time you need. Uh, no, we're, it's, we're seconds away. Okay. Okay, so I'm going down to that slide. Um, give me one moment. It's a bit of a luck. Okay, great, we're ready. Yeah, all right, bad sense. He looked different from his profile and definitely lied about his height. So I drank a lot to even things out. 
We ended up kissing. Things escalated quickly. He asked me to get on my knees. He wanted me to suck it for so long. So I told him, can we switch off already? But that wasn't much better. Then he asked, can I tie your hands? Sure. But that just made it harder for me to fix his mistakes. Then he blindfolded me. I'm doing this because you're mine. No, I'm not. Oh. Then the blindfold slipped off. Are you fucking filming me? What? No. My dad is in the fucking CIA. If you did film me, he'll find out and I promise he'll fucking kill you. I actually said this and I'm really glad that I thought about that so quickly. Um, maybe I can walk you home and try some of that weed that you have. I'll take the bus. Later. God, I feel so fucking disgusting. Um, that's the end of the it goes back to Stop share. Stop share. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I I don't know. Writing it down made me feel empowered. I think maybe uh the fact that my experience on what had happened was ink on paper was validation. Uh, it was a quiet testament of wrong, and I was surprised that I didn't really give a fuck about people knowing about my sex life. Um, since then, I've released other books, and books have become a larger force in my life in ways that are really awesome and really less awesome. Uh, there are four blah, blah, blahs in total, and the fourth comes out tonight. And I think they have become increasingly difficult and less fun to make in ways that are apparent if you read them all. They have led me to love, for real, friends, for real, books, and liberation of the spirit. And they have trapped me in some ways that I'm trying to deal with because I know the chains aren't so tight that I can't slip out of them and make a run for it. I'd like at this moment to diverge into a more abstract mode of speech. I no longer find careful recreation of reality to be as generative of a medium as that of unreality. <clears throat> what am I doing here? What are you doing here? Do you wanna talk about comics? What is a comic? Image and text? Do I have a platform right now? Is this what they mean when they say platform? Should I talk about something more important than myself? Like, 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 like the fact that despite living in the wealthiest nation that has ever existed, almost 50% of Americans have negative assets. That means their debts outweigh their earnings. Or, 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 or the fact that corporate greed is triumphing over humanity's best interests, leading us to a place of irreversible cl climate catastrophe. And, 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 and the fact that all of these injustices disproportionately affect the same disenfranchised demographics that have been fighting for equal rights since the establishment of government. I don't mean to be moralistic, but I really, 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 really feel like we are being numbed in this terrifying way that engenders apathy and apoliticism. I see it mostly in people my age and younger, and I'm pretty sure it has everything to do with cell phones. There's a whole world of real experiences and they activate you in ways a digital presence never could. I think people my age are being robbed of a life force that has historically been able to affect a great change. And I'm pretty worried. Um, it doesn't have to be this way, definitely not. And a bunch of us are trying to do things differently, imperfectly so. Art is a magical space that opens up possibility through absurdity and subversion of establishments that are not as fixed as they appear to be. Pessimism is easy. I don't wanna read this next part. Radical change is possible. <laughs> so throw your phone in the river and start feeling things intensely and read some books and express yourself in every way, in any way, comics are just the start. Without further ado, tonight's performance includes live music and readings from myself, Charlotte Pelissier, Jasper Krentz, Nate Garcia, Molly Dwyer, and Ashton Carlos. Yeah. Um, part of my, uh, like my, my goal of tonight is to humiliate myself in ways that I haven't before, which is becoming increasingly challenging um, and, uh, and was always my goal with the comics. So tonight I will be doing some songs, which I've never done and hopefully will be weird for me. Um, and I'd like to start off, it, it, it's two songs, one rolls into the other, but this first song I wrote about a troubling friend that I had uh, trouble accepting in all of his uh, imperfections and have since opened my mind and expectations to in order to understand him and accept him. Uh, and it's accompanied by a video shot by my brother and a costume change.
Oh, this? No, just no. keep it there. Okay. You're so evil and you're so scary. To me, it's very clear. But with your talents and your charms, they never seem to care. I'm scared of drugs and boys with sharp teeth and I'm the creature who your fingernails want to get beneath. I run away from you. I'll stay away from your cave, although it draws me in. I know you sleep with bones, and I hope to save my skin. Bat boy, I think I found a bat boy. Poor little bat boy. Bad, 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 bat boy. At night, you fly alone, feeling bad for your bat self. Smoking lots of bat weed, so bad for your bat health, bat boy. J'ai trouvé un bat boy, beau petit bat boy, bad, 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 bat boy. Once we slept together, we did it upside down, fucking in this cave weather. Our feet never touched the ground, bat boy. Bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. Now we're going to transition into another song. This one's more earnest. You walk through me, you undo me, and I let you, cause I get you. And your problems, let me solve them. You react late, keep your head straight. She's so pretty, it's a pity. When we lose each other, other people like to walk right out like nothing works after it's broken. But I'm staying misbehaving. I think you're sweet even, even when you hurt me. Don't desert me. Lay right down and let's get dirty. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, uh. Once I loved you and I still do, what can I do? I'm drawn to you, but it's different. I can't forget, so I'm moving with a purpose. I'll support you, won't extort you. I feel brand new, even though we stood the test of violent weather. We went through it, I feel better. Left the parts that weren't working, held on to the things that brought me pleasure, treasure, never better. I learned through you all we can do. Uh, uh, even if it doesn't work out, even if it doesn't work out, even if it doesn't work out, I am here now and you're here now. Even if it doesn't work out, even if it doesn't work out, even if it doesn't work out, I am here now and you're here now. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. That was extremely uncomfortable. And I have two more songs, so we're well on our way uh let's move on i think i think i have oh yes i'm actually really excited about this part um can we share the screen yes <clears throat> all right this is a new comic it's unfinished um and it's called the dogged cronies um okay give me one sec sure rousing speech oh yeah brief musical performance uh -huh. the screen cat okay Dog and cronies. Oh. The dog and cronies. Dog it. 
Having or showing tenacity and grim persistence. Crony, a close friend or companion. The dogged cronies. A spark of inspiration. Flash, nothing will ever be the same. We stand bearing ourselves in quiet honesty in front of you. It's time to meet the players. We see them usually not as they are, but as they'd like to be. Although every so often they can't help but be exactly as they are. The cynic, the pixie, the pirate, the bat, the mermaid. They are always in pain or bliss, but usually in some combination of the two. They are lonely for being individuals when their souls know they all make up a huge whole that they have lost touch with. You know them because you are them, and yet you don't. Oops. Because this is our condition. So let me introduce them to you as their separate selves, even though you and I both know they are all one. All of these characters have a lot in common. More than two parts of the same big person usually do. And this is how they can stand to spend so much time together. And they do, every night at seven. But I assure you, things are often difficult. That part is unavoidable. I should also say, I wrote this comic about the New York underground comic scene. One common interest is a deep hatred of injustice, which they all express in different ways. So different that it is sometimes hard to see they are all saying the same thing. We always are. They are, they are a sensitive bunch, or rather, they have fought hard not to lose that sensitivity, which is beaten out of us all. They have always found their sensitivity to be of great importance and are easily disturbed by tall glass buildings, bright white lights, harsh uncaring voices, overpriced food, and apathy in general. Our characters live in the comfort and confinement of the modern world and have never experienced the hunger of one unable to afford a hot meal although plenty of them are malnourished. They are aware and ashamed of their lucky lot in life and are ashamed of their shame because they know it doesn't help anyone. They all know the only pure love is the giving kind that expects nothing and accepts all. And yet they are often falling into messy romantic dynamics because they are also young and well-dressed and yes, sensitive, the dogged cronies. Their youth and sensitivity sometimes, not rarely, culminate into a good deal of insecurity, which infiltrates and challenges the harmony of the group and the self. They are no strangers to the rumor mill, the grapevine, or the telephone game, and their creative talents give them unfortunate ability to embellish. They all believe they have the power to change the world, or rather, they believe in believing in this power. They also all believe in hard work, to an almost self-effacing degree and routinely fa fail to adequately clothe, feed, and rest their bodies. As a whole, the men seem to do a worse job than the women in this regard, and further take sinister pleasure in their self-annihilation as if it ensures they will make good art. Oh, so now this, these are parts of the comic that I didn't finish, but I'll, I'm, I'm putting them in anyways. Um, the group tries their best to ignore the confines of binary gender, but cannot fully escape them. They understand that manhood and womanhood are both limiting conditions, but that womanhood is doubly so. The quote unquote woman plea, I am not beautiful, I am not a woman, I am an idea having thing. Can you accept me as such? Let's listen in on some of their conversations. Me is a set of situations prone to patterns. You're bugging. I'm always bugging, I'm a bug. Speak to me straightly, not sweetly. Sweet is not so sweet after all. I want to be friends with everyone, even though they're not all friends with each other and are sometimes not friends with me. I want to be friends with them still. My job is not to punish, and this includes myself. Violence against oneself is still violence. I'm not smarter than you. Maybe you are smarter than me, but most likely we are both dumb, dumb, dumb. I am you. I am you. You tell me that I'm strong, and I wonder if you say this for yourself, so that you may treat me rough and not think twice about it. I think she's beautiful, and I see what you see in her. Further, I think you have good taste. And then the, these are the last four panels of the comic, and then I'm gonna pass it on to Charlotte. We only exist in multitudes. Abolish the self or try. Maybe we will never love again, not in that way. Let's search for and share the secrets of the universe. The famed Charlotte Poussier, let's go. Oh, yeah. 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 So this is my comic contemporary. Yep, yep, la vida. What is it, Charlotte? You're afraid to glance to the sun and have inner truth revealed. Your discomfort in the self is prickling. Open up. Oh, shut up. I'm confident, thank God. Let me drink this beer and self, self. Good, 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 bad, bad, bad. Whew. 
I was raised by two French sarcastic gods, my mother Sandrine, my father Laurent. Would it explain my lack of self-worth? Cannot accept my vulnerability, I think it's gross. I believe one day I'll try LSD and have a very shocking experience which will cause me to become extremely mellow. Like an airhead, yeah, everything's cool. <laughs> um, my erotic fantasy. I'm gonna sit down. I don't. Do you want? Do you want a chair? Yeah. Well, I can do this. I don't talk to large crowds, so it freaks me out. But um. Doing amazing. Well, let's see. Okay. So my erotic fantasy to the great escape, freedom, a journey to mellowness, the imaginary trip begins. So I imagine I'd be three minutes in. Dramatic reenactment. Do we do? You, do we, can we set this up better for you? Just so. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just like conceal. As much as no, I it's good. It's good. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> really cool. Um, internal monologue. Why did I allow that Jesus as a motherfucker to give me one of those? He's not even that cute. I feel no pleasure. Um, then it would be the classic situation. It hits. Hello, erotic fantasy. Hello, mellow escape. Let's go. Total liberation of the mind. <laughs> Suddenly, it's like I gave him my life. I had to flee, leave the child, leave the man. Completely free, but I still feel it all. Still in the drug induced state. The panic relating to my state of life left, and the weird excitement of a highway entertainment. I'm now also closed. Come ride. Going, okay. 54 minutes on the cycle. Would you be upset if I asked you to pee on me? This world is cruel. The magic of the trip ends. My cynicism is still here. My mellowness has not been altered. I actually feel worse. Drugs are not good for me. That's it. So this is my comic book. It's um fictional, and it, yeah, it's a comic. Yep. That's the inside front cover of the comic book. You you want to go to the, the you, you want to go to the dog park, buddy? Fuck oh, yeah, Dan. I'm worried about my owner, Dan. He's been acting. Fucking weird. That night in the New York City sewer system. Oh, I'll let you guys see the doctor so <laughs> back to bed. Oh, I. I should be getting home to the pub. Back at home. Oh, fuck. Where's Dan? I need to fucking walk. Now, now I'm looking around and spinning around. And now I'm looking in both directions a few times. Oh, I gotta go. Well, shit, Dan's going to be pissed. I'm a dead pup walking. And you guys can find out what happens next if you guys buy this. Thank you. Thank you. Jasper was, for people walking from the stream, Jasper was drinking the wa water with the yeah, water. He's making sounds. All right, up next. The demonic duo of Nate Garcia and Molly Dwyer. They're going to do a performance. Let me do yeah. it. Stop the okay, stop yeah. the share. Right. 
Hello. This is about when you lose your boot heel. <laughs> Down to get my boot heel back. Trying to get my boot heel back. I lost them all on the train, baby. Up next, my cynical friend Ashton Carlos. Really hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, so Juliet made this awesome t shirt. It's a, it's a Brooklyn bookbreaker. It's like a, a fake baseball team that I've been dreaming about. And so I have some comments about it. Um, sorry if they're a little small. I'll be reading them then. Uh, this first story is called The City and Sin. Yes, they pull a fire alarm. Yes, they. Do Some, someone <laughs> someone needs to mute themselves on the. We'll just we'll keep going. Well, whoever's talking should mute themselves. Sammy Hernandez was born and had always lived in this city, and his life had gone the way one might imagine had the life of another one, especially those who fall asleep on the subway trains at night reliably. This is when I saw him before um, before he disappeared. He dreamt clutching his possessions under his chin and upon his lap, against the back of the carriage, before the door that may at any time open. His head rested, and thus throughout the bones that supported it, each and every tremor of the tracks passing registered unconsciously. I saw Sammy just once before he disappeared like this, and I thought of what his life up until this very instant might have been. He stayed on the train, falling off it, in between it, through it, at some point before the very next stop. He stayed on the train, and I got off to my job. And it really was a true coincidence the next day at work when I was assigned his disappearance. I accept. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we will be undergoing a mission to recover someone of note to the council of plans. He was under surveillance until all of a sudden, dead silence. No body has been located. No known whereabouts, no leads, nothing on the train where we lost him. He was an unremarkable minor leaguer and now works as a travel ball pitching coach. Why the council remains so invested in this man is beyond me. Take your time with his computer. Take all night if you have to. Yes, effectively. Um, so, Sammy Hernandez, full count Sammy, 20 years ago. Wow. So that's him, huh? What a cut. He's a pitcher, too. Yeah, he's crowding in now. Whap ball. Makes it one more next. Whap ball. 2 1. Whap ball. He won't swing now. Step in, sure. But he won't swing. Whap strike. And it's 3 2. It's not about to hit anymore. Two outs, bottom of the fourth with the B team. It's a statement now. He's looking to take the Kansas righty down. And how, how, he managed, how he managed that only looking. Wow. Wow. Can you really read his computer? 
transition so well, the pitch, and uh, to be continued. Thank you very much. All right, thanks to all the people who came in and helped out, really. That was really cool. Um, I, I planned this rant about humiliation and why I'm obsessed with it, but I didn't really plan it. I thought I was gonna rip, but maybe just, may, I think this thing is, is going on long enough. Maybe I'll just- No, no. you wanna ask questions about, okay, well- Keep going. All right, all right. So I don't know. When I started making comics, I, I made the first one and I told you guys that I wrote about my sex life a little bit. And then I made the second one and I don't know, people seem to respond to it. So I, I kept going with it. And I had things like this. I keep ruining men's lives and causing all of these problems. My name is Oopsie. Pretend you love me forever and I'll let you put it in me. I don't know. Like, then I have this other story about the sexual experience I had. So we were playing checkers in my room. I had never played. He had. He had never had sex. I had. This is my dad's checkers board. And then we kiss. And, <laughs> and then he says to me, your dad's going to play chess with you on this board, and he's going to have no idea I fucked you on it. And it was the best sex of my life. <laughs> this happened on my dad's car, not on a checker board. Um, I don't know why I felt the need to talk about it. I really, <laughs> but I still, and then, and then, and then what happened for the third one was I wanted to still insert these stories, but I hadn't had that much sex. Um, so I did this thing where I just put myself and I thought it would be like a ridiculous statement to just draw yourself like naked. And I, I had this fold out poster where I was yeah. also naked and I thought that people would take it as like a bit, but then like my friends have this poster on their walls <laughs> and like a lot of people I know are like, oh yeah, I love that poster in my room. And I don't know if it's coming across the way that I want it to. Maybe they're doing a bit. Maybe they're doing a bit. I hope so. Um, but I just want to say that this, I, I, I thought it was like a ridiculous thing to make yourself, I mean, how self-obsessed do you have to be to like draw yourself naked and then think that people are going to have this fold out image. Oh, I also, okay. So then I also wanted to talk just a little bit about how, I mean, basically what I've been doing the whole time and I'm stopping, I really am because at this point, like the comics and my life are, hard to separate it's been like i've i've had too many experiences where they just are completely intertwined and i and i really need a break but this was great i had sex with this one guy this story is called double blindfold because i had the stroke of genius i was like what if we were both wearing blindfolds because normally it's one person wearing the blindfold and i want things to be equal <laughs> um and that was really nice because for the first like 10 minutes, you're just hiding from each other and you have no idea when you're going to make contact, you know? Um, that was so fun. But he is like this weirdo who when I asked him, I was like, hey, can I can I draw this comic about you? He was like, yeah. I was like, do you want me to like change your name or appearance? He's like, only if you're, only if it's to make me hotter. And then he let me put like the photo of him. So these all of these stories have always been true. I mean, maybe it's easy to tell which ones are really purely fictional and we'll get to one i'm doing a reading of one I, is that next i'm not sure yeah 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 so the next reading is from the third blah 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 which i also wanted to say i wrote all of these comics high on weed the fourth uh -huh. blah 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 all of them sober wow i don't know what i don't know what that does for you guys um but this next one has nothing to do with my personal life which is kind of a relief because i don't know i i can i can get specific in the q a if you guys ask the right questions um but I don't know. It's 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 not something I'm so interested in anymore. Uh, but I think it's good. I was really inspired by these films by Kabe Zahedi and some other people who just like try really hard to depict real life, and then by doing that, you end up with something that's really profound. Um, I don't know. It's, it's I thought it was great and it felt real, but no longer. Um, all right, so I'm going to do this reading of this comic called Moth and Butterfly that is very clearly written completely under uh, weed and juice state. Moth, Butterfly, and Raccoon. Oh, also, my friends Madeline, Grace, and Nico are in this, and I think Madeline's watching, and I love you very much. Moth, Butterfly, and Raccoon start a band together, a bona fide comique by Mistress Juliet Collet. Six, three, eleven, two. 
I'd let you sniff my underwear. I'd let you finger me in public. I'd let you suck on my toes. I'd even let you kiss on my face or my butt, just so long as you admit that I'm smarter than you. Wow, that was beautiful. A real feminist anthem for the ages. Yeah, whatever. All right, guys, our gig at the Ladybug Inn is tomorrow, and all we have is this one shitty 30-second song. Ugh, I don't even want to play for those alternative wannabe idiots. Yeah, I mean, I hate everyone too, but to be honest, that mindset has just kept us stoned and isolated with nothing but one song to show for all our angst. Yeah, that's the problem with weed. All the good ideas, none of the follow-through to finish them. Oh, also, you get really tired and depressed after. What do you think is more real anyways, the idea or its physical manifestation? Stop, literally stop. No philosophical debates, Jesus Christ. At this rate, we're going to have to do covers. I'd actually rather kill myself. Don't fucking hit that bong, mammal piece of shit. All right, mom, mom. Let's work on that oral fixation song. Eight, 13, seven, two. I eat a pack of gum a day, chewing till my mouth muscles ache. I tried to smoke a cigarette, but I chewed through the filter, yeah. One long, hard night later. All right, homies, we are officially out of passion flower yerba mate tea, and we just ran out of weed. Well, that's okay. I figure 10 songs is enough anyways, even if they're shitty and terrible. The bus to the lady dug in. Driving on night, we could be a shadow. Um, staring at the window as if in a trance, Moth fantasizes about her lover, Danny Boy, uh, trademark. Delicious, Danny Boy's trademark, delicious cop. When suddenly she comes to a sudden realization all of a sudden. God fucking damn it, motherfucking shit cunt bitch. We still don't have a motherfucking name for our piece of shit piss cunt band. At the Ladybug Inn. Oh, guest starring Jasper and Maria. Do you guys like shower together? Well, yes. Fuck, that's hot. Either of you ladies fancy a smoke? Yes. 69, Googleplex, Infinity, three. Being a whore is my chore. Being a cunt gets things done. Slut, 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 slut. Holy shit, we sound fucking amazing. I have nipples for nickels and knives for dimes. Oh God, I don't feel very good. No, no, no. Harness the power of the ganja. <laughs> God, butterfly looks so beautiful. Male peacocks evolved larger and larger feathers to attract mates, and now they can't fly anymore. La, la, la. Koalas eat the poisonous and hard to eat eucalyptus leaf. They ferment it in their stomachs. They grind their teeth down until they're no longer functional and they starve to death. Raccoon stands up. This is a perfect night. This is the perfect moment to confess my feelings with Butterfly. I love the way she listens to me when I talk about my feelings. Plus, I don't like the way Beaver has been looking at her lately. Hey, Butterfly, Butterfly, I've loved you since you were a caterpillar. Even when you were a nasty cocoon, be my girlfriend. Uh, can we not do this now? We're in the middle of a set. I don't know, we're in a band together. Sounds complicated. Oh, right. Oh God, I don't feel very. La -di -da. We are misplaced affection. Thank you and good night. All right. Yeah, well, the second musical performance. Get up already. I know. I just need one second. I looked outside and saw a piece of you hurt my eyes and hurt my feelings too, hurt my pride. So I took off my shoes, took a bath, returned my love for you. Little children can't sit patiently, rough, smooth talkers talk on endlessly. You seemed caught up with getting rid of me. I'll stay at home and write you poetry. We look sweet when we wear matching ties. Wonder why I can't look in your eyes. Feelings are hard and I'm bad at goodbyes, but it went all wrong. Still I romanticize because I'm a degenerate. Paranoid. It's because I'm a degenerate. Paranoid. I choked on memories, fell down to my knees, got stung by the bees, had your love on lease, wore my heart on my sleeve. Don't forget to say please and don't forget to bring my keys. Don't forget to be a tease. 
Don't forget to forget everything you ever said. Don't forget to forget moments laid out in my bed. Don't forget to forget that way you were on the mend. Don't forget to forget how and why the thing did end. Look at me doing good. Can't you see I'm doing good? Moving on like I should. Moving on, knock on wood. In the end, you were my friend. In the end, you did pretend. Now my heart is on the mend. Don't forget why things did end. We look sweet when we win. Two times wonder why I can't look in your eyes. Feelings are hard and I'm bad at goodbyes, but it went all wrong. So I romanticize because I got degenerate paranoid. It's because I'm a degenerate paranoid. Transition to the next song. You held my face so tender when you kissed me. You bit my lips and bit my cheek and tongue. And I never knew a kiss could be so painful. You kissed me and you knew my heart was one. I try to kiss myself upon my shoulder. I hug myself while stretched out for a nap. But with my touch, I am far too familiar. And with my heart, you've always had a knack. I like you very a lot. I like you very a lot. You hurt my pride I thought I didn't have and ran me dry and cut my strength in half. I told no lies, my love is all I have. I'm ashamed to cry when liars love's a sham. Unpack my thoughts to make a lighter bed. Trace your words across my thighs and back. Once love, once wronged, I am not meant to have. Let go, let live, to forge a straighter path. I like you very a lot. I like you very a lot. I try to fill each moment with some meaning. I try to fill the emptiness with art. But lively life has always been so fleeting. And for your love, I'll always be a dog. I hurt my knees by crawling after your love. You kissed my wounds, then sprinkled them with salt. I wanted just to be reborn in your eyes. My search for pure love always comes up short. I also want to say that with comics and with everything, there's like this imaginary like level of skill that you might think that you have to have to enter it. And it it's probably very obvious that I don't really know how to play music. And I don't, I mean, it's the same thing with comics. Like just, just do it. I think that's the best way to learn. Um, all right. So Ashton uh, will be doing, yeah, let's get this on camera for sure. Ashton will be doing this reading for me. Um, I also want to end with that song. Basically, the way I really don't like the way that my work has taken, where it just became so much about relationships, I think because that's what people like to read about. Um, but it was also what I was letting my my whole life become encompassed with. Uh, so I made a lot of love songs and I made a lot of love comics and I'm sick of it and I'm sick of that and I'm sick of myself. I don't think it's as generative as ideas. Um, but we can finish with my opus, my tragic uh, love comic. It's the longest thing I've ever done. I really wanted to make it magical and beautiful to capture the magic and the beauty of 
um, a romance that happened. And Ashton will be reading it with me, which is so generous. And he's wearing a mask that I made. All right. It's called Les Histoires d'Amour Finis Mal en Général, which is from a French song by this band called Le Rita Mitsuko or something. Um, and it translates to love stories end badly, usually, or it's funny when they say it in the song because there's like a pause. Uh, they always end badly, usually, whatever. They do. Um, all right. I walk this road. Oh, we oh, did. You want, okay. I think so. Let me know. Okay. I walk this road alone, slowly, with curiosity and trepidation. Others choose to run or drive, but I prefer walking, safely, steadily. Though I travel alone by design, for a little while now, I've felt the presence of another. I have the feeling I'm being followed. Hey, you! Are you following me? Well... Yes. You're so strange. Do you want to come for a drive with me? I'm strange too. Why would I want to do that? Because you believe in magic. <laughs> so what if I do? If your fate was in front of you, would you recognize it? Well, I've been looking everywhere for you. You are meant to be. It is so terrible and wonderful to feel chosen. What? How am I supposed to believe that? Because it's true. I've been sending out signals for a while. Look, you don't have to get in. I'm happy just to follow next to you. Hoping that someone would find them and understand. I guess that's okay. Big fires. He's rather handsome and interesting. I love you. I like the way he grips the wheel so sensitively. <laughs> what? I've, I've loved you since before I met you. Come with me. I'll show you. We'll go really fast. I want to believe in a world where things like this can happen. I've never gone really fast before. But I need to believe in a world where things like this can happen to me. Okay. Wow, the world is buzzing by so quickly. My heart moves faster as we quicken the pace and every moment is filled with meaning and magic. It's beautiful. I wanna take this leap with you. Really? It means so much to me. Mm -hmm. The pace is quickened so much that it has a will of its own. At this speed, the rest of the world can't reach you. Slow down. Is love supposed to be painful? I said, slow down. How much pain is normal? Let me out. Wait, I can slow down. I said, let me out. Can you choose yourself over fate? Will you drive next to me still? Can you slow a moving train? No. My walk feels different now. I have to force my limbs to move. The effort is extraordinary. Wait. I'll go anywhere with you. Maybe that means this is real love. Please, let's just go slower. Love is all I've ever wanted. These days, I don't know who I, who I am anymore. Too fast. Look, we can take turns driving. I hurt you by leaving. I shouldn't have done that. I'm bad. You don't know how to drive. Let me do it. But we have to take turns. I don't know how to drive. I don't know how to drive. You don't trust me. I do. Of course. I love you. I have a bad feeling in my gut. Then let me drive. But I'll stick it around for you. But I'll stick around for you. Crash. 
As I pick myself up from the wreckage, sometimes it's best to run. That is true. That was incredible. Thank you so much. And thank you guys all. Um, let's, um, who has questions? Who wants to start asking anyone here a question? We can. You can maybe come up if you have a question. If you're more comfortable sitting down, that's fine too. Yeah, it just takes the first one to start. There we go. Oh, yeah, maybe this this feels a little. Is that is how this works? Let's 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 leave it. Talking to you, but like we're figuring it out as we go. But yeah, that's what do we want to do that? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, three things. The last one is a question. First, that was great. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Second, I was listening to the No Comprendo, the record of the house. Oh, right. It's so good, right? Right, I was walking really? here. Yeah, things have been a very good. funny coincidence. Yeah, there's been a lot of coincidences. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of coincidences, what I wanted to ask you was your relationship or how you relate your comics to your songs. I think there's an obvious kind of thread in content that, you know, like all the songs were first person. And most of the comics, enunciation in comics is difficult. I guess it's also kind of first person to some degree. But I think there's a lot of formal similarities too. Do you think of that at all as you do either of these things? Like, do you think of those two as part of one self expression or whatever? Or do you think of those two things completely separately? Just things that you do. I guess that's the question. I was like, what how much do you relate those two things in your mind versus now and if you do relate them how yeah um there there haven't been songs I, this is the first time i've done i've shared any of this stuff um and but i think i mean they started in the same with same way with comics how i introduced them i created an imaginary band that i was creating imaginary songs for and i made imaginary <laughs> album art for it just because i really like to make things but the idea of like taking yourself seriously enough to do any of those things is just horrifying um and so that's how i started making songs and that's the same way i started making comics and it, it's also very cathartic emotionally you know it's kind of the same uh thing over there um and i i made this comic uh, called Pirate Band. And so I was like, oh, this isn't me writing the songs. This is the character in Pirate Band who's really heartbroken. Coincidentally, I'm also really heartbroken and she's on a ship and I'm away from everyone I know. So I just kind of dissociated and there was something else writing these songs. Um, but I think songs are a lot like comics, like especially for my books, which are anthologies and each um, comic in them has its own style. And they're like these little contained bits that all fit within the larger thing, but they're separate. And some are funny and some are less funny. Um, I don't really see a difference between a lot of art mediums. It's just ways to express yourself. Um, so maybe I don't think them as separate at all. I go to art school too. So everyone's doing everything all the time. Um, and that feels right. I mean, we're just trying to express things and why would we limit ourselves? Can I ask you guys something? Um, how did you, if people are all just encountering everything you guys have done tonight all at once? Can you talk a little bit about how you guys found each other's work and that I process? Can I answer this? It's in my spot. Well, I was um doing the like Saturday class at, at Cooper in high school in eleventh grade, and then I saw like this like folder, like stapled to the wall or something, like one of those yellow Manila ones, you know, and um and it was blah 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 one which is in the front, you guys should go by me. Um, and, um, and I just like read it and I was pretty like amazed by the fact that somebody's doing this stuff and like actually putting stuff out into like the world by themselves without anybody else um, like needing to approve it or anything. So I just followed um, her social media as we do nowadays. <laughs> and then we started messaging and then she, um, she was like, I have some comics that I think you'd like, we should do like a book swap. And I was like, and she was like, what's your address? I'll mail them. And I was like, let's just meet at Cooper. 
And then she didn't respond for a while because I don't think she knew why I knew that. But then I told her that I found them at the school and and she was like, that's crazy. You go to Cooper? I was like, no. She's like, OK. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm in the, the Saturday thing for high schoolers. And then she's like, I teach that. So I was like, wow, that's wow. Yeah. And then so then we just started drawing and then she invited me to comic club because Floyd was going to be at that one and she wanted me to meet him. So then I went. Oh wait, could we make could we maybe describe what comic book club is and and just just so people know or um comic book club is something I started at my school, but we just meet every week and we draw. And now it's not at my school anymore because enough people who aren't at my school go there. But I wanted to create a space where people could just come and I don't know, they wouldn't be at any I don't know. It was just a space where people draw together. Yeah. Pretty true. No, 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 no. And then I remember just like Liv, who is cool, um, shout out. She was like, she put in her headphones while she was drawing. And I was like, wow, like we can just do that. So then I was like, yeah. And then I just went every week because it was really fun and there was zero pressure. Um, and it's just a good uh, place. Jasper goes to Cooper now and he was the vice president of Comic Club at Cooper before even going there, which I think is pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then I met everyone well I met everyone through comics in some way but it just goes to show like just put your stuff out there people will find you which is kind of not the best thing sometimes sometimes people that you don't want to find you find you um but I think it's great and yeah I don't know it's like I think especially growing up with uh technology and having that be a way where you can like instantly reach many people we don't think that that's possible in other forms. And it so is, it so is like physical. I've come across people's comics in person and then met them later. And I think that's the best way I'm going to, I'm about to piece out of all the social stuff. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Did you guys want to answer? I just remember on a kind of like really cold kind of night in March, 2023, and I was smoking nicotine with uh, Floyd Tangerman, American Underground cartoonist outside of Desert Island in Brooklyn. And then Juliet Clay asked, Clay asked me if I would like to swap zines or if I was above it. And I said, no. And then I got the zines and we traded. And then I was asked if I regretted it. And then I also said no. And I still don't. <laughs> I just met all these people. Today. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a, just a lie. <laughs> Um, I met Juliet on like the second day of the first week of after COVID school, and she was remarkably unpleasant to me. And then I saw her because I thought he was cute. And then, um, I saw her drawing a comic, and I had not done any myself, but I had dreamed of doing it. And then I met somebody who, who also had dreamed of it. And so I put them in contact and then it seemed like we were all dreaming about it anyways. So then we all just kept doing it. And, and that's basically how it went, I think. Um, Julia and I met each other really interestingly, I guess, but um, it's been through like school and comics and um, it's been really great getting to know her more. And also like, I feel like we share a lot of similarities. So it's been nice to have someone that like, you can actually relate to and kind of grow your work and, and you, get inspired. So, you guys collaborate. Huh? Yeah, we're actually, we're working on a, a, we're working on a comic right now that's like a kind of duo thing. So that's exciting. And that's a lot of fun to do in the comics club. So we do that all the time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Next question. No. <laughs> that's not true. Charlotte and I were dating the same person, and that's how we. Yeah. <laughs> there, do more people have questions here? Who wants to ask the next question? There's so many of you here. What music are you listening to right now? Of um, as of this week. <laughs> All of you, actually, everyone. <laughs> That's stump them all. Charlotte, Charlotte put me onto this crazy band called The Makeup. Oh yeah, they're so. The good. Makeup's really good. I am Pentagon is their best song. 
<laughs> Personally. Oh, Ika Mouse. That's pretty good. I've been uh I've been just listening to like the New York Comics and Picture Story Symposium. I I just watch old baseball games. <laughs> you listen to audiobooks. And audiobooks. Yes. What did everyone have for breakfast today? That's a stock question. Stock question, sir. Appreciate it, but you can ask them later. Can we get questions from these guys? No. Um, the oh, the people in the chat. Yeah, if people in the chat have a question as well, um, you guys are free to ask a question as well. Okay. Well, let's. See, there's a question here. Um, if you don't want to do comics about like romance or some other, what are other topics that you think are more going to be more generative for the future? I don't want to do comics. <laughs> Maybe I think this might be the the a break for a while. Um. Well, I, I the dogged cronies wasn't about uh romance. I mean, there's a bit about it, but I just wanted to cover the whole gamut of all of life. And recently, I feel like I've been letting the whole world pass through me. Um, and that has been giving me a lot of ideas and not in, you know, just in a general way. It was good. Do you see maybe a shift away from that? Like with people that you know are making comics, if you look at comics maybe from 20 years ago, they're more focused on those kinds of things. Romance. Like maybe more, yeah, melodrama or, or autobio that's around romance. Do you see that maybe shifting away a little bit with people that you know? I think a lot of people that I, I know, uh, are able to invoke some kind of chaos through their artwork that is extremely generative and dismantles your perception of reality. And that has nothing to do with romantic heteronormative love as has been prescribed by everything that we consume. And that's really great. And, and all of these people, and there are so many of them, and I don't know how you can get your hands on their comics, but they're out there are, free they're just opening themselves up to different ways of experiencing reality and that's really awesome and i agree they're not they're not doing narrative romantic autobio work and and if they are they're doing it very well as well do you guys feel just like in the way that you guys as you, you all make work in a different way but do you feel any a lot of you came from cooper where i don't think that there's there is there's not a comments program there right so you're figuring out how to do this stuff not necessarily with an instructor or anything like that. Do you feel some kind of like perceived idea of how this medium is like rules that are inherent to this medium or does that feel totally irrelevant? It feels irrelevant to me. I don't know. Now, what do you guys think? I thought that I was kind of like, I didn't really like when I was doing boxes. I got self-conscious about them because of everyone around me not doing any. Um, so then you have pa panels, you have boxes. Uh, <laughs> so I wasn't, so, so I started by not really liking panels and now i'm kind of refining them but it's interesting to like be surrounded by so such um out there artists and it really changes what you think is like the normal you know well <laughs> i found that new york really creates a lot of chaotic cartoons to experiment uh more rapidly than other, than any other cartoonist group I've seen ever, but I'm very young, so I don't know. I love boxes. I'm addicted to cartoons in boxes. I like traditional stuff. Um, I've thought about this question a lot, and it's, I think, helpful because the context is Cooper for a lot of us, and Cooper doesn't have any comments, so it's, there's no, there's no prescription. It's like technological limitations and like resources, and that's about it. And so then it's about justifying it for yourself and what that means and matters and, and, and what you find like makes a story interesting. Um, there's also like a digital thing that's happening with a lot of people our age. There's um, the sense of material reality, I think is like a little more loose because we're reading web comics and we're reading pirated comics and we're reading things that are like, no, no, it's information and stories that are no longer grounded to like 
the material, the material limitations of their distribution. And so I think this is influencing how we view a book in and of itself. Another question from the audience? Yes, there's someone there. Do you want to come forward a little bit? Hey. Um, I have a question. Um, you mentioned you wanted to take a break maybe from autobio comics. And I'm wondering, would you really, would you take that break if everyone else was making autobio comics too? Are they? No, they're not. But what if? Can, it, can you ask that question to just, just yeah, can, can you just say that one more time? It's a really good question. Um, if everyone else was making autobio comics, like every single one yeah. in the audience in the yeah. world, would you take a break from autobio comics? Okay, here's what I think happened. I People like the autobio comics more than the not autobio comics. So they started being the only thing that I was doing. And I think I did it to an extreme where now I have to take the other extreme and stop, but it has nothing to do with, I just ruined it for myself. Like I'm not enjoying it anymore because I put too much of myself into it and stopped making space for other things that I like to do. But if I had balanced that better, I would still be doing them. I, I just like, every time I try to do them now, it feels wrong and it feels forced. Um, but everybody should, if they want to. I, I, the question was, yeah, lost. Uh, I guess the per, my primary question would be, was it because of like vulnerability or like overexposure? Maybe. I think I wrote comics about real people and that didn't, I mean, first it was going over well and then it stopped going over so well and I got really paranoid um, and that ruined things for me. But... I don't know. I think I'll come back to it. Maybe I have no idea, honestly. I just don't want to do it right now. But maybe I don't have so many like thoughts about it. I just have impulse about it. Yeah, I yeah. just relate to that. Actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't make other bio comments right now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Someone else have a question in the audience? Oh, what about fictionalizing? but still having the emotional truth. The way you did with the chessboard and the checkerboard in the car, you could make a character who's not unlike yourself, uh, but it isn't you. And you can embellish and change if you do fiction, but you can still use your emotional truth. This is no longer a way I process my emotions. I no longer have any emotions even. Ah, ah. I'm merely a mirror reflecting everything around me. That's the position that I'm going to take for a little bit until it is easier for me to have a ego. <laughs> yes. That's not any question, Jessica. Um, I just, I empathize with Juliet for the first time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> And that's because I'm, I've stopped making, I, I, I had this impulse to stop making things up and, and try to do this where I, I, I gave myself a new name, but it was my face. And I would use my camera sort of to position it around around this character and, and do weird third person perspectives and, and think about where I was in relation to a story that is about me. But the problem that I had with it is I started and it was like a shadow walking behind myself. And things started happening to me that I was like expecting to happen in a really, in a really eerie way. And I only was conscious of this shadow for about two weeks, three weeks of like thinking and in a way that I thought Juliet thought all the time. And that just was too much for me. So I, I empathize with, with this. It, it's, it can be really, really hard to walk behind yourself or something. Uh, one thing that Ashton mentioned was, you know, kind of the relationship between like experiencing things on a screen and tactility. And I think one of the things that I like about your comics, most of the comics on what a lot of the other people here are me, is that they are very like, like I teach, you know, in art schools and like some of the for example, you know, and everything that, you know, everyone in the scene is making 
has a very kind of tactile handmade feeling. It's a real sense of like gesture and texture. At the same time, I get the feeling that in your work, this, the, there, uh, you are using kind of digital technology, maybe to generate reference and things like that. You know, like the the blindfold story kind of felt like you were maybe screen grabbing or something. You know, I don't know what you know, but like and using you know, or maybe even some of the other ones, maybe taking pictures of yourself and using them as reference. Um, so on the one hand, on the one hand, you know, you're like obviously very like fluid and fluent, you know, going back and forth between those things. But at the same time, the books that you make both in terms of what the art looks like and then the books themselves have a really kind of tactile, textural quality to it. Uh, everything has a very kind of handmade feeling. I'm just kind of wondering if that's something that you're conscious of uh, as quality that you want to maintain in your work or how you feel about maybe the kind of digital aspects of the process and the more analog aspects and how they inform one another. Um, that's like three questions. They just like take half of one. Um, I don't love being on a computer, and less, more like less and less, increasingly so. I I really hate it. Um, so I'm trying to do things as analog as possible. I really like the look of collage, and I have used a lot of photo references. I really don't want to use photo references anymore because I have to, that whole setting up of taking photos of yourself, printing it. Um, I was making a story about an ex-boyfriend and I was carrying around this giant stack of photos, all the photos I had ever taken of him, printed out, and I was carrying that shit around like a psycho um, <laughs> and um, eventually threw it all away. And I was like, oh my God. Like, um, but I don't know. Now I really want to make films for the next bit and I want to make them analog. I don't know. The question is so long. Um, I also, I don't know. I think we all really like doing things with our hands and books are still a tangible thing that you can touch and hold. And that's really important to me. And I'm sure that's really important to everyone else here. Um, I don't, I, and I don't really, I hate the aesthetics of computers. I think whenever I use digital work, it's a crutch because I'm scared that I can't draw it well enough or that my, like, my mistakes won't look quirky and nice like other people's, like, you know, hands do. Um, so I use, I just like, throughout my comments, you can see like it started with no references and then I just got tighter and tighter and I was using photos for every drawing and I just ruined it. I just like, got more and more control and all of my friends are telling me oh you should use your left hand you should you should be smoking weed you know like <laughs> how do you, you de-skill um because I really like the unpredictability of the line but now whenever I draw I know exactly what it's going to look like and it's completely ruined it for me so I, I don't know over the course of the, the blah blah blahs I think you can see that and that's what I was talking about about it becoming less fun does anyone else have something to say about digital? Yeah. When you close the computer, it's, it's like whatever was on it is gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like working analog because you can like carry around your comic for like months on end and it just gets like kind of beat in your bag and then you're like showing your friends and stuff. And there's like, it kind of comes with you like through all these things that you're experiencing, which is really fun. Um, And I just think it's like, the materials you're using too, they just take a different approach and it's a lot more natural, at least for like probably most of us. Mm -hmm. um, I think on the computer too, it almost adds like a filter to everything just because it's like gonna be seen digital and it's made digital. So there's like been some nice computer art, but I think, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just think like analog is so sweet and like really precious. And then like screen printing, which a lot of us do, is like a really nice way to reproduce things without like a computer, I guess. You can even just like draw an as they print that right away. I think me and Nate will say the same thing that, uh, not to make a generalization about my peers, but we are computer children with a sick, twisted love for paper that will not go away, whether you like to say that we came from getting 
like little leapfrog from Peter's circa 2005. Um, that infatuation for paper will not die. You can only take it out with fire or water. And that's about it. You can give us an iPhone and flip through some reels, but that's that's not close to the drug of paper ever. I'll also add on top of that, thank you, Molly. Dwight was fantastic. That you have to have with original art a time capsule that you can make money on if people want to buy your original art at some point in your life. It's a time capsule that you can earn a living in. Well, all the computers listening are actually with you guys. Well, I was, you talked at the beginning about like the reality of making a living these days. You're talking about selling original art. One thing that I noticed with you guys is that your work, like as you keep making it, I would say gets more uncompromising, less, le there seems like there's less and less concern for making changes with it that might be more coherent in terms of making a living from making comics in that way. What do you guys, and, but what I, what I see is also the enthusiasm for making them doesn't decrease. Like you, you seem, you guys seem more and more committed to making this work. So what do you, what do you think about that in terms of, you know, sustaining yourself as life goes on while you're making this kind of work? What's, what kind of thoughts about that do you have? Um, I live with my grandma. I don't pay rent. So this is a question that I have chosen not to think about. I guess like comics for me are just like pure pleasure. I like sell and make some money off it, but like it's not my only income. So then I just use it as like an outlet and more like less for funds. Um, this really cool crust pump homeless guy that I know who's outside of Cooper Union yesterday who I met who bought my zine. Um, with no money that he had the last time I saw him said to me and Julia and Nate said, uh, you know, we're going to die broke. Right. And I said, yeah. And then we went and got a beer and it was cool. You know, <laughs> well, first we robbed him to get the money. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say as a full-time cartoonist, I really, 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 really need a job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suck in that whole heart of thing. Another audience question? We, we're on like an hour and a half, so maybe we have time for one more question. That was Anybody? Well, you guys did it. This was amazing to see. It was amazing to see you guys read your comics. Thank you so much for, for your time doing this. Oh, do you want to say something? I'd like to say last or a couple of weeks ago, I peed myself in front of my school on purpose because I wanted to be embarrassed and I wasn't at all. And now I'm extremely <laughs> embarrassed and I can't look anybody in the eyes after this. Um, so I, no, you, should I be the opposite. you should be the opposite of me. Well, should is irrelevant with, <laughs> when it comes to emotions. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone who came out for that. And don't forget, all their work or many of their work is at the register. So you can right. you can make your way there in an orderly way now, or you can hang around and talk to them a little bit. They're probably okay with that. All right. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> No, I'm not. Oh, yeah.